Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back around the cauldron where we talk about witchcraft, polytheism, and the intersection of magic and mundane. And today's video is one that I know other people have made before, but I got my first scammer message on Instagram. And I wanna talk about scammers in the witchcraft and spiritual community. So if you are on Instagram, I think it happens on Twitter too, but I haven't found any over there. I'm gonna be talking specifically about Instagram. If you're on Instagram in any sort of spiritual capacity, I'm sure you know that there are scammers running rampant in the spiritual community on Instagram. These are people that have created fake accounts who are going around and DMing people with messages saying like, oh, I have a message from your ancestors or spirit has reached out to me or I was drawn to your energy. And they offer you a, a quote unquote reading right? For donations or for money or whatever. But these people are scammers. And I'm going to talk about it because I got my first message on Instagram from someone pretending to be... Mm, I can't remember if the first one was someone pretending to be the redheaded witch or simply witched, which is Hannah Hawthorne. Um, I have screenshots of everything, so I'm going to put them up here on the screen in a little bit. But first, I want to talk about how these scammers operate and what it is that they're doing. So these people generally will duplicate popular accounts. Luckily, um, my account is not popular enough on Instagram to have a scammer, but they will um, duplicate like Hearth Witch or Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, because these people are... Or, or those particular witches are popular accounts. They have a lot of followers and um, they're, they're easy targets in this sense. And, and I'll tell you why. Because those people have so many followers um, and it's, it's difficult for them to keep up with comments or to message people back, if someone receives a DM from someone that looks like Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, first off, they're probably gonna be excited that this person followed them, that they messaged them in the first place, and they might not pay attention to the little red flags in the scammer's account that would show that that's not actually Olivia, that that's not the real person, right? So these people operate on the excitement of others, on um, our brain's capacity to glance over things that might that, that become obvious once we notice them, like adding an extra I in a word to make it look like it's a tired witch, but it's not actually. And they prey on people's uh, desire for connection with the people that they're fans of, right? So it, and it happened to me, kind of, uh, several months ago when I first started um, posting content on TikTok or posting videos on TikTok, I hate the word content, um, I posted a tarot video and it, almost immediately an account that looked like Robin Valentine's, a tired witch, followed me. And I was like, oh shit, Robin Valentine followed me. That's really cool. And I posted about it on Twitter and I was like, the moment that you post a tarot video and a tired witch follows you and Robin was like, but did I though? Because I haven't been on TikTok in days. And so upon further inspection, I was like, oh, that's not actually you. So the whole point of that is that this can happen to anyone, right? Anybody can fall for this if they're not paying close enough attention to the person's username, to um, the pictures that they post, to the messages that they send, right? So I don't have a full insight into how these accounts operate, so I'm just going to give you my running theory based on my own experience with these people following me. Uh, first, they duplicate a popular account. Sometimes when they duplicate an account, they don't go back and delete you know, the old pictures or whatever from a previous account that they duplicated because they cycle through accounts. They'll copy an account and change the username and change the picture. And then once they're done with that one, they'll just use the same account, change the username, change a picture, and it's just an ongoing process. 
So once they've duplicated an account, generally what's going to happen is they're going to go through that person's followers and follow a bunch of people. So um, if I was going to copy um, Heather, the the Wild Woodland Witch. Actually, she's not the Wild Woodland Witch anymore. I think she's the Wild Forest Witch. Um, if I was going to go through and I was going to copy her Instagram account, right, I would copy her profile picture, her bio, and like clone all of her pictures and put it all in an account. Then I would go through her followers list and I would follow everybody once my username looked similar enough to hers. Because then people are going to be like, oh my gosh, Heather followed me. That's so cool, right? And this is how they get people because then what they do is they reach out with a message and it looks kind of like this one that I'm going to put up here on the screen. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what it says, but it doesn't sound right. Okay. So they message people saying, Hey, I have a message for you. The ancestors reached out to me. I was drawn to your energy. Um, you have a lot of negativity around you and let me do a reading for you to consult the spirits on who is doing you harm and who is cursing you and yada yada, right? So they come to these people and they offer readings and they say, I can do this reading for $25 or I can do this reading for a donation that I'm going to make in the name of an orphanage. That one actually happened to me. Somebody told me that. Uh, so they do that. They get, they get paid and then they ghost. That's it. They will send you like a cash app or a PayPal email, um, something like that, that's very easy to set up, right? I could create an email address and I could create a cash app and be done. But they don't actually follow through with their reading. They just get the money and then they leave. They'll block you um, or change the account or whatever. And that's how they do this. So if they can get 10 people to give them $10 in a matter of 10 minutes, it's a hundred bucks that they have scammed people from. They're scammed people for, and, uh, you know, it's easy money for them because people fall for it. And then if you confront them, they're just mean about it. Oh, I'm going to curse you. I'm going to do a, a bad spell on you or whatever. Or they try to make you feel guilty. Like the one scammer that I had most recently who messaged me and was like, yes, I run a foundation and I do these readings for donations for an orphanage and, you know, donate as much as you feel that would help these children and yada, yada. Right? So let's talk about how to spot a scammer. One of the first things that you need to pay attention to and this is going to sound really bad, especially with the parasocial relationships that we create online, is if a really popular account follows you without having interacted with you before is red flag number one. And that sounds really bad, but think about it. If I had a million followers on Instagram and I had never liked one of your photos, I had never commented on one of your photos, but immediately I followed you. I'd be like, that's concerning. Um, I mean, honestly, at first I'd probably be like, oh my gosh, that's really exciting. But knowing what I know now, I would be concerned. The second thing that you need to look out for is the username. Usually what they do is they will add an extra letter um, or they will change a letter around to make it less noticeable. Um, let's see. So for example, if somebody has an, a lowercase L in their username, the scammer might change the lowercase L to a capital I. They look the same on, on phones and on the computer, right? So it would be less noticeable. It would be hard to tell that the username was different. Anytime there are extra numbers added to a username or underscores or periods or anything like that, that's a red flag. Getting an unsolicited message for a reading is also a red flag. No reader worth their salt is going to message a random person out of the blue and say, I have a reading for you. I was drawn to your energy. The ancestors told me to talk to you. No one is going to do that. 
that's unethical. It crosses boundaries that don't need to be crossed. And it's, it's rude and irritating, right? So if somebody cold DMs you, just like cold calls for telemarketers, red flag, okay? You also wanna watch out in the message for certain phrases, um, 5D, ascension, uh, I don't know, the, there's some other ones that I, they're escaping my brain right now, but I'll put some of the messages here on the screen so that you can see them. The phrasing is not right. If I sent you a DM and you've been watching my videos and reading my captions on my pictures and stuff for a while, and I said, love and light, fellow spiritual being, I have a reading from the ancestors to talk to you about your ascension into 5D. Hopefully you would know that it's not me. I don't talk like that. I don't even type like that in my captions. <laughs> so you got to pay attention to things like that as well. And a lot of times, um, English is not the scammer's native language. So you might find grammatical errors or spelling errors or like this particular message where they sent me a message and they said they had a massage for me. And I was like, ooh, you have a massage? Cool, where can I get this massage? I could use a massage, right? So the words are different. Um, the, the grammar might be incorrect. There might be things that are misspelled. Double check for that too. Okay, so now that we have some red flags and some things out of the way for how to spot a scammer, what do you do when a scammer messages you? And at first I used to just like come across a scammer and just block and report. Instagram seems to have gotten rid of the capacity to report an account um, as impersonating like a business account where Originally, it was you could only report them for impersonating a verified account, but then they changed it to impersonating anybody with like a business or an influencer account, even if they weren't verified. But that's been removed. Like I can no longer report people and type in the Witch of Wonderlust for the person that they're impersonating. That was a word jumble. Um, but I used to just block and report, right? But now I have taken the chaotic side right? These people don't scare me. I don't care. If they were capable of doing anything magically or otherwise, they wouldn't need to resort to scamming, right? So now, and it's happened a couple of times already, now when I get a scammer message, I play along, right? Play along, I waste their time, I ask a million questions, and then I'll finally get to like the end where I can tell that they're just, they're losing their patience, right? And I'm like, okay, sure, you can read for me. What's your PayPal email address for me to send the donation to? Get their PayPal email address, take screenshots of your entire conversation and report them and their PayPal email address to PayPal for fraud. You can tell them if you want. I have told people like, oh, hey, you wanna know what I sense? I sense that you're full of shit and you're scamming people. And oh, by the way, your Instagram account's been reported to Instagram and your email address has been reported to PayPal. Um, may, you know, may the gods have mercy on you or, you know, I'm sure your ancestors think highly about what you're doing. And then they get mad and they tell me, oh, well, I'm gonna put a bad spell on you. Like, yeah, I'm sure if you were capable of that, then you wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. I understand from the standpoint of being in a tight spot and needing to make money to provide for yourself, but I will never understand the people who resort to scamming to do that. So I do not feel bad about reporting their emails to PayPal. Literally, all you have to do is send the screenshots of the conversation, send them their PayPal email address, um, type up a little email that says, uh, you know, this person is impersonating somebody on Instagram and they're scamming people out of money using PayPal. Here's the PayPal email, email address. Here's our conversation. I strung them along. Uh, to get their PayPal email address. I'm aware that they are fraudulent. Here you go, investigation. I've been sending all of this stuff to phishing at paypal.com because I haven't found a better way to do it. Uh, I don't know if it's helping, but 
it makes me feel better. It also makes me feel good knowing that I wasted the scammers time knowing that they weren't going to get anywhere with me because any time that they waste on me is time that they can't get from someone else to scam money out of them. I usually have the time to sit here and mess with people, mess with scammers on the internet. It's fine. I'm okay with that. Don't feel like you have to do that if you don't have the time to mess with it or if they intimidate you or you just don't want to deal with it. That's fine. If you come across a scammer, block them, report them, and just move about your day. Don't tag the original account. Um, don't message the original account. People on Instagram that are being copied and they're being impersonated, they know that it's happening, but there's literally nothing they can do about it. Instagram does not care. Meta does not care. If they cared, they would take more steps to do something about it. So um, please use discernment. Don't let yourself be scammed. Tell your friends. I mean, I understand how exciting it would be if somebody you looked up to followed you on Instagram, but always do your due diligence and make sure that it's actually them. Uh, and, and don't respond to people that DM you randomly. Don't click on any links. Don't send people any money through Instagram. This isn't just affecting the witchcraft community. I've also seen it affecting the artist community and the tattoo community. Like, we're not alone in this. But we, at this point, Instagram has proven that they don't care. So we have to take steps on our own to keep ourselves safe. So don't get scammed. If you want to waste the scammer's time, waste the scammer's time. It's fun. I think it's hilarious. And I enjoy doing it because any time they waste with me is time that they don't have to spend scamming somebody else. So that's that. Don't get scammed. Stay safe on the internet. Don't send random people money. Um, if you want a reading from somebody that actually does readings, make sure that they have a shop and they're most likely aren't going to do readings solely on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.